The opinions and interpretations expressed in this and other videos are that of Marty Huey and may not be representative of his colleagues and employer. The videos cover overlapping requirements of codes, standards, and regulations. Your situation will require full analysis beyond the concepts presented here. Dead end and common path of travel are commonly misunderstood as topics that are similar to each other, but not quite. Dead end corridors is anything beyond the exit, even one inch. Typically, we are given a dead end corridor length that we're allowed to exceed up to 20 feet. In some cases, it's three, so you'll need to check the code. For this reference of this video, we are going to use 20 feet. Common path of travel is typically 75 feet, but again, it varies. But the concepts will be understood in this video. So let's create a simple office building with stairs at either end and a elevator core located here in the middle. Proportions are not exactly correct, but we'll create a hallway connecting the two stairs and the elevator core. And to demonstrate the understanding is from the edge of the door of the stair to the end of the corridor cannot be greater than our dead end allowance. So to better help illustrate this situation, let's look at this area blown up and look at it a little bit more in detail. So with our stair door and our office entry door, that distance cannot be greater than 20 feet or we have a dead end situation. Now understanding this as a typical office layout, we're gonna have some office furniture located within it, which needs to be understood by the code official and the fire marshal, and depending on its layout, it will create a common path to travel situation. So you get the idea here. So starting here, following our path to the door and understanding all the way through, we've got office furniture laid out here. We get to the door and that is not our common path to travel distance, not the total distance. The total distance is all the way to the stair door where at this point we have a decision whether or not we go into this stair or go into the next stair. Therefore, that is our common path of travel or our location of our decision point. That's something that I want you to think about. It's the decision point in which you can decide whether you're going to go through point A or point B. If we put a door here, where is our decision point? Our decision point could be right here, depending on how the furniture is laid out in the office. So this point right here is now our common path of travel distance. So starting at the first location all the way to this dot is where our common path of travel is decided. And yes, these two doors leading out of the office area into the same corridor potentially would need to be separated by the distance required for a large space, either one half for an unsprinkled building or one third for a sprinkled building. That's yet another application of the understanding of different codes. But basically, where we might have a choice of two doors, where our decision point, whether to go to door A or door B, that becomes our common path of travel distance point. Please post or email comments on what you've seen. Suggestions for future topics are also welcome. Marty enjoys learning from the experience of others. More videos will be added, which can be found at martyhuey.com.